The role of the artist is to ask questions, not answer them. Anton Chekhov. So here are the questions. Is suffering simply a creation of the mind? Or does the physical, material world around you in your personal circumstances, do those play a role in suffering? And perhaps more importantly, must one have experienced suffering firsthand in order to help those around us who suffer? Welcome back to Searching the Archives. Today we're going to be reviewing Ward Number 6, a short story by Anton Chekhov. So the plot of this story goes something like this. A reserved and intelligent physician, a man by the name of Dr. Andre Reagan, is assigned to lead the mental asylum in a small provincial town in Russia. Dr. Reagan dabbles in philosophy. He's well-read. He's developing views on life, the human condition, suffering, what it all means. Uh, but everything he's dabbling in is experienced secondhand through books and the writings of others. Dr. Reagan really longs for deep intellectual conversation with someone else in real life, but he kind of feels that everyone in this small town is really intellectually beneath him, and he becomes more and more alienated and to himself throughout the course of this book. That is, of course, until he meets a very interesting patient, a man by the name of Ivan Gromov. So after a fall from relative nobility, Ivan Gromov has wound up being interned in this mental asylum and he knows pain and suffering firsthand. Um, and he basically directly challenges all of the views that Dr. Reagan has been cultivating over the years. This sparks a fire of curiosity. Finally, the doctor has found someone he deems his intellectual peer. They begin to spend more and more time together and it turns out everyone else in the small provincial town starts to think that Dr. Reagan is losing his mind. In a strange turn of events, Dr. Reagan is eventually locked, he's tricked, and he winds up getting interned in the mental asylum himself. And he finally gets to experience the suffering and pain firsthand that has always been at arm's length. I would say this book can be read in less than two hours if you're a fast reader. I can't recommend it enough. I mean, it feels like a small bite-sized Dostoevsky novel. You get your philosophy, your psychological discussions, you get um, really deep thinking, and it's all condensed into this really short story. The plot itself is good, but I would say the heart of this story are the conversations between Dr. Reagan and Ivan. So let's now explore. On one hand, we have Dr. Reagan, who takes a very stoic perspective. He believes the intellect is the pinnacle of what it means to be human and that the rational person will look around, realize he, he has kind of a fatalistic view of reality. So he thinks basically the rational person will look around, they'll, re, they'll realize the frivolous and determined nature of things, and they'll basically train themselves to become indifferent to the trials of life. He would argue that true freedom lies in the cold indifference to the physical circumstances around you. Morality and logic don't come in. It all depends on chance. There's neither morality nor logic in my being a doctor and your being a mental patient. There is nothing but idle chance. In any surroundings, you can find tranquility in yourself. Diogenes lived in a tub, yet he was happier than all the kings of the earth. Marcus Aurelius says, a pain is a vivid idea of pain. Make an effort of will to change that idea, to dismiss it. Cease to complain, and the pain will disappear. There is no real difference between a warm, snug study and this ward. A man's peace and contentment do not lie outside a man, but in himself. So, the doctor here, he's not denying the objective reality of pain. He's saying pain is objective and true, and it exists, but suffering is a creation of the mind. And if you change your mind you will remove suffering. And it's like that last line. It's like, yeah, we've all heard this, right? True happiness doesn't come from external factors. It comes from within. But Ivan responds with a rather scathing critique. The Stoics, whom you are parodying, were remarkable people, but their doctrine crystallized 2,000 years ago. A doctrine which advocates indifference to wealth and the comforts of life and a contempt for suffering and death is quite unintelligible to the vast majority of men. 
since that majority has never known wealth or the comforts of life, and to despise suffering would mean to despising life itself. Take Christ, for instance. Christ responded to reality by weeping, smiling, being sorrowful, moved to wrath, even overcome by misery. He did not go to meet his sufferings with a smile. He did not despise death, but prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane that this cup might pass him by. Ivan's point seems to be that, you know, we exist in physical bodies and these physical bodies respond to the external stimuli around us. To truly live is to react and grapple with these, not to numb ourselves and pretend that we are robots. Ivan continues his scathing remarks. No, I want to know how it is that you consider yourself competent to judge of contempt for suffering and so on. Have you ever suffered? Have you any idea of suffering? You grew up under your father's wing and you studied at his expense. For more than 20 years, you've lived rent-free with heating, lighting, all service provided. In fact, you've seen nothing of life. You know absolutely nothing of it. And you are only theoretically acquainted with reality. We are kept here behind barred windows, tortured, left to rot. But that is very good and reasonable because there's no difference at all between this ward and a warm, snug study a convenient philosophy. You despise suffering, but I'll be bound if you pinch your finger in the door, you will howl at the top of your voice. This is just a small snippet from an excellent philosophical argument between two great thinkers. What struck me was you really sense that, you know, the doctor is supposed to be taking care of the patient, but you can see very clearly because one has experienced things at arm's length and one has experienced them firsthand. There's a big gulf between the two that seems hard to cross, um, a chasm that separates them. Um, you know, so I ask you, dear viewer, what do you think? Is suffering simply a creation of the mind or do your physical circumstances impact it? And more importantly, do you have to experience suffering firsthand in order to help those who suffer? Before you go, I want to leave you with a short video clip, which is very relevant to the things we're discussing here. Uh, it's from a former Bishop of Rochester, New York, and I promise you, I think it's worth your while. <laughs> 